All right, so for the Fahrenheit versus Celsius graph, I'll kind of share how I plotted it. And you have a little bit of freedom in this because you're looking at maybe the plot in Google Sheets. And um, depending on how Google Sheets scales each axis, I'm just looking for kind of a good representation of that on your sheet so that if you look back at this later, you could understand what the graph was telling you. So my thinking on this one is if I looked at my Celsius values, they ran from a low temperature for the ice water bath around zero. And if we had perfect data, it would be exactly zero. And then the boiling water sample was hopefully up near 100 degrees Celsius from your data. And so I can go ahead and just let each block equal 10 degrees Celsius. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. I always like to have 0, 0 in my graph. Um, Google Sheets doesn't always do that. If you want to force Google Sheets to show the 0 point, if you click right on the axis, the axis um, options will show up on the right hand side and you can put in 0 as the minimum. So if you need that in a future case, just realize that's an option. So my Fahrenheit measurements, when I looked at those, they went up over 200. The boiling point, again, should have been the warmest temperature. Hopefully yours was around 212 degrees Fahrenheit because that's what we would expect it to be. And so in setting up this axis, I let it run all the way up to 250, meaning that each block is going to be worth 25 degrees Fahrenheit. So 25, 50, <clears throat> 75, and so on. And again, you have some choice in how you set up that scale. I don't expect you to have it exactly like mine necessarily. All right, and then looking at kind of a couple data points of interest, freezing point of water should have plotted out pretty close to 32 degrees Fahrenheit because that is the freezing point of water in Fahrenheit. And then you're going to have some data points along a line, hopefully, and then your your warmest data point should be at about 100, and 100 degrees Celsius and 212 Fahrenheit. Oh, my screen's frozen. Sorry, guys. You can't see what I'm seeing right now. You guys can tell me I'm being stupid at any point. Do you know you're reading off your paper? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was working on the screen here. So now you can see it. I was so worried about getting the recording going, I forgot to unfreeze my screen. So um, quick re-summary, just setting my scale on Celsius and Fahrenheit. 32 degrees should be where my intercept came in. And then again, boiling point of water should about should have been around 100 degrees Celsius and 212 Fahrenheit. So again, you'll have data points along here, and the line of best fit obviously would fall along those data points. Okay. The line of best fit equation from Google Sheets should have looked like y equals 1.8x plus 32. And you may not have gotten those values exact because when you take your temperature measurements, sometimes the temperature reading just changes a little bit between the point that you read it in one unit and change it to another unit. So I know some groups had like 1.79. Um, if we had perfect data or if we just go with two digit accuracy, we would want to have a slope of 1.8. So the slope is 1.8. And again, we want units on any number. A slope is a ratio of rise over run, if you want to think about it that way. So the rise units would be degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> over run units of degrees Celsius. The intercept, as we said, should be 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And the significance of the intercept is that is the freezing point of water on both scales, right? Zero Celsius and 32 Fahrenheit is freezing point of water. Um, the model, again, the model is taking basically this equation and writing it 
in terms of what we're actually studying here. So instead of y equals, I'm going to have Tf for Fahrenheit temperature equals. That's on the y axis. The slope is next. I like to add it with units. <clears throat> times x, the x variable is the Celsius temperature, and then again the intercept is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So this I would say is kind of the proper long form version of the equation with units attached. If you're just doing a quick conversion, you might want to just note this as kind of a shorthand Really what you're doing with the math is you're taking 1.8 times the Celsius temperature and then adding in 32. So for the text problems for today, uh, if you're kind of just quickly doing calculations, it's okay to think of it in that way. It's just important that you're plugging in a Celsius temperature here to get the corresponding Fahrenheit temperature. If you needed to solve for Celsius, you could plug in a Fahrenheit temperature here, do some algebra to solve for TC. Okay, one thing I wanted to note. So I'm guessing at some point in your educational career you've come across this formula, maybe in math class, maybe in science. Um, but I, I doubt it probably like stuck in your head as something easy to remember. Um, I want to suggest that if we think a little bit about the graph, you really don't have to memorize this equation if you can reason out what uh, the slope is and the intercept. We already said the intercept is 32 because that's the freezing point of water at 0 Celsius. Where we get 1.8, we can look at comparing the freezing point data point to the boiling point data point. So if you can remember that water boils at 212 and 100 Celsius, what you can do is think, okay, there's a certain amount of run between those two points. And there's also a certain amount of rise between those two points. The run is 100 degrees Celsius, right? 100 degrees Celsius between freezing and boiling. The rise is not 212 because we're starting at 32. The rise is 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's really the difference between, one of the big differences between the two temperature scales is Fahrenheit, when he was coming up with his scale, for whatever reason, chose more marks between uh, freezing and boiling. Um, and that allowed his temperature, or his uh, thermometer, to have a little bit more precision. His degrees were smaller, so you get a different um, number of degrees change for even you know, a smaller amount of temperature change. Um, so if I divide out rise over run, 180 degrees Fahrenheit over 100 degrees Celsius, that's where the 1.8 comes from. So if I warm something up by 1 degree Celsius, I actually warm it up 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Another way to think about this is 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit per one degree Celsius. It's the ratio of how much the Fahrenheit temperature changes per one degree Celsius change. Okay. So if you can remember that, you can figure out the slope pretty quickly. If you know that the intercept is 32, then you've built your equation for Fahrenheit versus Celsius. Questions there? All right, so let's look at Kelvin versus Celsius. This one, I think most groups were kind of starting in class, but maybe didn't finish. <clears throat> and again, if you look at your data table, your Celsius temperature should run from about zero to 100 again, the ice water bath to the boiling water bath. And your Kelvin values are all quite large, like well over 200. And this is where Google Sheets probably didn't include the zero point but we can look at what it, what it will plot out as if we keep the zero point. Our largest Kelvin temperature should have been up near about 373 Kelvin, okay? 
And so I need a pretty big scale here to fit all my data. And I set it to go up to 400 because I wanted to include this data point out here that went all the way up to around 373. So that means each of my squares here is 40 Kelvin. And again, you might be a little more zoomed in on your data and that's okay. I would just say it's preferable to include the zero point in the future if you can. So here my freezing point measurement would have been around zero Celsius. It should have been all the way up, change colors here, around uh, 273 Kelvin. So that's going to fall somewhere in here. The boiling point temperature should have been up near 373. So again, maybe somewhere in here. If we had perfect measurements, that's where those two measurements would fall. And of course, you have more data points along this line of best fit, hopefully. And kind of the standout thing from this graph is that the slope from the trend line analysis actually should equal one. So from Google Sheets, your trend line tool should have given you that equation. So what does that mean? Well, the slope, again, rise units over run units. Rise here is measured in Kelvin. Run is measured in degrees Celsius. So we have one Kelvin temperature change per one degree Celsius change. What that tells me, and I might even, just to verify that, I'll write it as 1.0 because it is right on the dot. One Kelvin of temperature change is exactly the same as a Celsius degree temperature change. And that's because the Kelvin scale came after Celsius. The Celsius scale had already become pretty popular, and then scientists started to study the idea about is there an a, a absolute zero temperature where you can't get any colder? And they did some experiments, and we'll actually do an experiment next week where we kind of do a similar analysis. You can have a zero point for temperature because temperature measures particle motion. That zero point would be when particle motion stops. You can get something so cold that the particles are no longer moving. That's what we call absolute zero. And that's what was set as the zero point on the Kelvin scale. So a Kelvin is in size equal to a degree Celsius, but there's a different zero point. And that zero point is where we get this intercept of 273 Kelvin. So if we were to run this trend line backwards until we got to zero Kelvin, the corresponding Celsius temperature is actually negative 273 with a few more decimal places of accuracy if you want to go so far. But to whole units, if I trend this backward, absolute zero is at negative 273 Kelvin. Okay, so the model should look like the Kelvin temperature will equal a slope of 1, Kelvin per degree Celsius, times the Celsius temperature, plus 273 Kelvin. <clears throat> so this slope does not change the value. It's multiplying by 1, but it would change the unit. So if I plugged in a Celsius temperature here, Celsius degrees would cancel, and then I'd be in Kelvin, which is what I want. So the shorthand version of this one, I would just leave off the 1, because 1 times TC is still that value, plus 273. So if you're doing a quick conversion between Celsius and Kelvin, all you do is add 273 to that Celsius temperature. Okay. And again, the reason why Kelvin temperatures seem so large is because zero Kelvin is incredibly cold. So if you're measuring general lab temperature, even if it's kind of cool in the room today, it's very, very warm compared to absolute zero.
Okay. And that might be something good to note on your sheet, that um, absolute zero equals uh, zero Kelvin equals negative 273 degrees Celsius. And so again, because the slope is 1, if we go forward to 0 Celsius, we're going to be at positive 273 Kelvin. All right. Any general questions on that graph or slope intercept end model? All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop my recording.